Welcome everyone to our SciEx Biopharma podcast. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Roxy. And in this series, we are uncovering how scientists are rewriting the rules for analytical chemistry in biopharma. In today's episode, we are going to talk about viral vector characterization. We have an expert here with us, Jill Bradley graham from Sanofi. Welcome, Jill. Thank you, guys. Before we get started, Jill, where in the world are you today? I am in Waltham, Massachusetts. What would you be doing if you weren't on our podcast right now? Um, I would be in lab setting up a run. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. So to get to know you a little bit better, we'd like to ask you a couple questions um, and answer with one word, the first thought that comes into your head. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. As a scientist, would you say you're a rather a gatherer or a hunter? Um, gatherer. If you were to describe what you do with one adjective, what would it be? Uh, dynamic. I like that. What is the one thing you look forward to most going into work every single day? Um, I think the main thing for me is the people that I work with. Jill, in very simple terms, how do you explain to a non-scientist what you do for work? I work in gene and cell therapy. And essentially what that means is that there are um, people get diseases and generally when it's related to rare diseases, they don't have any control whether they get that disease or not. Um, and so we work on ways to make sure that we have, I guess more of my job in particular is to ensure the safety and the efficacy and characterize the entirety of the product um, so that what we are delivering can help the patient in the best way possible. Great answer. Yeah. Um, now, what challenges, what common challenges do you face with viral vector characterization? So the main things are, they're huge. They're a lot bigger than, their gen than other biologic counterparts, such as fusion proteins, uh, monoclonal antibodies, and of course, small molecules. So their size is one challenge. Um, another challenge is their heterogeneity and their complex structure and nature. Um, so generally, you know, in, in drug product characterization, you're looking at one aspect, one biomolecule, and these things are containing three to four different types of biomolecules. Considering all of these challenges and knowing how hard it is to work in the lab, where mistakes can happen, everyone who worked in the lab knows that, I think. How do you deal with failure, so mistake happening in the lab? You do the best you can. So that's, I think the way I deal with it personally is a lot of planning ahead of time. So with whatever material we can work, work with, I always try to say, okay, if we have a minimum of this, what can we what can we do knowing mistakes might happen? And we always try to ask for a little bit over um, to develop assays so that we do have some margin of error. Um, and then just a lot of lot of experimental planning. Makes sense. Thank you. What what are your thoughts on a journal of failed experiments? So uh, a summary of things people already know they don't work, but no one talks about them. I think it's honestly great, and I think it should be talked about more. I uh, just in general, um, like science is 90% failure. And in, in particular, when you are dealing with biology, it's, it's almost never as expected. It's never exact. It's always a trend. And so um, I think I, I think you can learn a lot. There's always learning tons from failed experiments. There's always something else to pick up on. And um, I think it needs to be, I feel like the mindset may need to be switched around that where instead of saying it's a failed experiment, it just doesn't answer the hypothesis that you proposed rather than it's a failed experiment. Jill, what do you think is key overcoming the challenges as well as analytical technology? Honestly, I think the key is collaboration. And, um, you know, the analytical techniques, we can't work in a volume. And it's critical that 
we talk to the vendors and the application scientists because they're the ones that push those technologies to their limits. And then they show us how, um, how to develop the methods. And it's key to have that kind of communication and um, broadening our understanding of not only the instruments or the technologies, um, but sharing the information not only speeds up the process, but deepens the knowledge and creates relationships that that have have continue on for a very long time. And um, that's part of, you know, when you get excited of coming to work, it's not just the direct people you work with, but it's also the relationships that you've built with the vendors and you get excited about talking to them and solving problems or issues one person cannot do it all absolutely one person cannot do it all that's a great statement thank you so much jill for joining us today and telling us more about the challenges of viral vector characterization we were so grateful to have you here with us thank you guys so much this is actually really fun okay, <laughs> Glad to, be here. to the viral vectors <laughs> <laughs> And to our viewers, thank you all for watching and tuning into our Biopharma podcast. Make sure to visit SciX.com to learn more about applications for viral vector characterization. And until then, keep rewriting the rules. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.